praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, praise the Lord. The Lord bless everyone and be with every one of us in Jesus' name. And that the word we're hearing will do good in our lives, transform us, change us, and make us go in the right direction in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I will thank you because you have called us into the kingdom. And we journey on, unto the end, until we reach that glorious home and that glorious city, that heavenly city, in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to be men of understanding. And to the people who are definitely prepared for that glorious city on high in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Consider we're coming to Revelation chapter 21. I read from verse 1. Please open your Bible. Revelation chapter 21. Reading from verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven, the skies, and the first earth, the globe, were passed away and there was no more sea. Verse 2, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. And be their God. Then in verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow. Nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things have passed away. Then in verse 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Verse 6, I, and he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Now verse 7, he that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. Tonight, we're looking at an important subject, very important, essential to every Christian, essential to everyone here on earth. And it's the subject of heaven and its holy, eternal inhabitants. Heaven is the place where God dwells. Heaven is the place where the holy angels the elect angels, the good angels live. Heaven is the place that Christ went to. When he was blessing his disciples, he was lifted up before them and he went into heaven. And then the two angels appeared and told them, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here? gazing and looking of this same Jesus will come in like manner from heaven and 
he will take us home heaven is the place that Stephen saw he was about to die and the people were throwing stones at him he opened his eyes and he saw the glory of heaven and he said I see the heavens opened and the son of God Jesus Christ standing in at his right hand heaven is the place that Jesus told that thief on the cross Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Heaven is that place that Paul the apostle was taking. He was taking to the third heaven. And he saw and he heard words that he couldn't describe to any man. Heaven is the place from where the whole book of Revelation had been given to an angel to be revealed unto his servant John, heaven is the place that now we're being told that the voice came from heaven where God lives, where the saints are, where the angels are. Heaven is the place where the voice came. Behold, I make all things new. Is the place where the Lord Himself has said, He that overcometh, I will give him to eat of the tree of life. That is in the paradise of God. We're talking about heaven and its holy eternal inhabitants. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the revelation and eternal stage of the glory of heaven. Revelation. You couldn't know this without revelation. You couldn't tell what happens at the end of life. You couldn't tell where we're going to be when the whole earth, the whole globe is burnt up and we leave this place. We have to have that by revelation. And thank God, the Lord has given us the revelation through Jesus Christ. You remember the prayer? Our Father, which art in, uh, tell me, heaven. Jesus spoke about it and Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said, Father, I praise you, I rejoice because you have revealed these unto the babes and you have hidden each from the wise and the religious people. The Lord spoke about heaven, he spoke about his father and he said, I came from heaven and i go back unto my father in heaven he came to reveal to us there is a place called heaven number one the revelation and the eternal stage of glory the glory of heaven number two the rejection and everlasting suffering of the godless with hypocrites the lord emphasized that too he said they will come from the east and the west and they will enter into the kingdom of heaven and they will be with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob but you, the children, so to say, physical, natural children of Abraham will be cast out and there there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth jesus spoke about that that the hypocrites and the godless are going to be rejected and he says then will they go into everlasting punishment point number two the rejection and everlasting suffering of the godless with hypocrites number three our righteousness and entire sanctification before going to heaven they don't give salvation to people in heaven you get the salvation here before you go sanctification is not a given to people after they have gone to heaven you must get that sanctification and that holiness here on earth before you get there, there our righteousness and entire sanctification before going to heaven let's look at number one number one 
It's the revelation and eternal stage of the glory of heaven. Revelation chapter 21, verse 20, uh, verses 1 to 5. We have read that already. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, the indisputable revelation on heaven. And it's given by God. If anybody is disputing, if anybody is debating about the reality of heaven, is arguing with God. And you can't argue with somebody who is living in a particular place. If you tell me your abode, if you tell me your residence, if you tell me where you are living, and you've been living there for years, you know the surrounding, you know everything about that residence, and I have never been there, and then I'm arguing with you, that would be foolish. God lives in heaven. He's been there for all eternity. And for any human being, any philosopher, any historian, any scientist, any human being, no matter his position, no matter his knowledge about earth, to argue with God about heaven. That's foolish. You can't do that. So, the indispensable revelation of God on heaven. Number two, the indescribable. You know, you're talking about heaven and there is no language on earth that can totally and completely, we don't have the vocabulary, we don't have the knowledge of the language to describe heaven fully it's indescribable it's the indescribable revelation of the glory of heaven all we can say is that the place is beautiful it's more than that it's glorious it's more than that it's the splendor of heaven it's more than that we just don't have the word we're trying like a baby in the womb she, he has not, he's not born yet He's not coming to this world yet Then to describe the face of the father And the face of the mother And then to describe the place where the parents are living The child is not there yet And we're not there yet All we can do is to say Looking at the revelation of the word of God That that place is so beautiful And is so glorious we cannot describe number two the, the indescribable revelation of the glory of heaven number three is the indispensable righteousness indispensable righteousness and godliness for heaven want to get to heaven and we're on our way to heaven and there is something indispensable you may have a lot of other things you may know a lot of other things you may do a lot of other things you may possess a lot of other things but here is the indispensable thing you ought to have is righteousness and the godliness as we are on our way to heaven let's come to number two number number one rather number one the indisputable revelation of god on heaven look at revelation chapter 21 verse 1 and i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away you know even this first earth all the globe the soil, the minerals, everything stored in it. For all these thousands of years, the geologists and the scientists have not finished discovering everything on the earth. And then the sky and the galaxies and all the stars, all those astrologers and the scientists, they have not finished even discovering all the stars. And they cannot tell us the names of all the stars yet. If that is so for earth, 
How about for the abode of God? How about the place where God lives? It says the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Understand? Sea. He didn't say no more water because Revelation chapter 22, verse 1, talks about the river of the water of life. Clear as crystal. Not like the polluted water we have now in the sea. All the pollution is gone. And then it says there is no more sea. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it tells us, And I, John, saw the holy city. Uh, New Jerusalem coming down from God Look at this Out of heaven Out of heaven New Jerusalem come prepared as a bride Adorned for her husband And then in verse 3 it tells us It says and I heard a great voice out of heaven Out of heaven Out of heaven Yes Heaven is revealed The revelation of the glory of heaven And it says Behold the tabernacle of God is with men And he will dwell with them And they shall be his people They are saved, they are redeemed, they are sanctified, they are made holy They shall be his people And God himself shall be with them And be their God. Look at Acts chapter 7, reading from verse 55. Here is Stephen, and he said, But he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, into heaven, into heaven. That's why he looked and he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And then in verse 55, he said, And said, but he said, being full of the Holy Ghost, he looked into up steadfastly into heaven. Revelation of heaven, into heaven. And he saw the glory of God. And Jesus, that's verse 55, is standing at the right hand of God. And now in verse 56, he tells us and said, Behold, I see. Behold, I see he was about to get there Saved, sanctified, made holy, made righteous Ready and prepared to go where Jesus Christ has gone He said I see the heavens opened And the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God And then in Second Peter chapter 3 Reading from verse 13 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 13 Nevertheless we according to his promise Look for new heavens and a new earth The old sky, old heavens all pass away And the old earth, the old globe all pass away And now according to his promise We look for new heavens and a new earth Wherein dwelleth righteousness And in verse 14 It says Wherefore beloved Seeing ye look for such things Be diligent There's something to do Somebody cannot just say Praise the Lord there is heaven And I'm going to heaven No preparation No pardon No purity and there is no partnership with God There is no cleansing by the blood of the Lamb He is not taking any decision He is not making any effort And he's not looking at the word of God saying Here is the requirement of the Lord And here is what I, I need to do We are preparing Seeing that we look for such things Be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace Without spot and blameless That's the indisputable revelation of God on heaven Number two Number two here is the indescribable revelation Of the glory of heaven Indescribable First Corinthians chapter 13 We're reading from verse 9 In First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 9 for we know in part And we prophesy 
in part. In verse 10, it says, But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Look up here. That primary school child was told to draw the picture of his father. And the child was so happy. Yes, I can. I know daddy very well and puts pencil on paper and draws the picture of the father the teacher said this is how your father looks yes that's my father okay take that home and show daddy that you drew his picture and a child brought that back home and the father looked at the picture and he laughed but he kept the picture but later, that child finished high school, went to university, and he studied arts, drawing. And now he came back home, and the father said, How far are you going with your subject? Oh, the child said, I'm doing well. Can I pose here, sit down on this chair, and then you draw my picture? Yes, daddy, I can. And then... That child now drew the picture and the father brought the old picture that he had drawn and put it by the side of this new picture that the child has now drawn and the child laughed. Did I do that? Yes, that's what you did when you were in the primary school. You see, when we get over there and we see heaven, and we see the glory, and we see the splendor, and we see the Father, and we see the Son. All the knowledge we thought we had here of the glory of heaven, of the splendor of heaven, and of the glory of the things beyond the sky. All that is in part will vanish away, and then the perfect knowledge will come. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it says, For now we see through a glass darkly. Everything we see now about heaven, about the glory, it's indescribable. We cannot tell. We just try to explain to one another to let us know that it's going to be so glorious. Now, we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now, I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known And uh, you remember the queen of Sheba When she came to Solomon And then she said In my country I was told All about your glory And all about your exaltation I believed it not I thought they were exaggerating I thought it was too much But now that I come And I see it myself Half of it Has not being told the same thing you hear about heaven now it's like it's too good to be true but when we get there you will know that a fraction half of what the glory of heaven is has not been told first corinthians chapter 2 we're reading from verse 9 in first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 but as it is written I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. In verse 10, but God has revealed them unto us. All we're studying about, in, about heaven and the little we know which is very much this is all god wants us to know at this time that our nature our humanness can grasp can understand the spirit has revealed that unto us and for the spirit searches all things yea the deep things of god we're coming to number three here and it's the indispensable righteousness 
and godliness for heaven indispensable matthew chapter 5 verse 6 blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled verse 7 it says blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy verse 8 blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god for they shall see god you knock at the door and when the door was opened they say who are you asking for you're asking for the father you're asking for the man you're asking for the landlord of that house then you are ushered in and you see him in seeing him he conducts you around you cannot see the house in reality you can't see the picture from afar but for you to get in to all those apartments and to see the beauty of the place and to see the architectural design of the place you'll see the landlord when you see him then he can conduct you around and make you to see everything there you have to see god before he will allow you to look at all the streets of heaven what they're made of what the mansions of heaven what they are you have to see god first and it says without purity of heart you cannot see him and so you cannot see heaven it says blessed at the pure in heart for they shall see god now you'll be at the description of a beautiful place and you became so captivated by the description and because of that you leave every other thing you say i am going there i want to see that place i want to see the man who is so great to be the owner of that place and that is so much in your heart and as you are moving on let's hold up or say i'm getting there as you are moving on you might sometimes even hit your feet your foot on a stone and that is painful you might go through some difficulties but the challenge is i will not stop until i see that place the same thing we're going to heaven as we're going to heaven on our way persecution may come trial may come difficulties may arise opposition may come but you realize the things on earth are not the things you want to see you want to see something greater and higher and more splendid because of that you don't care you don't mind what might be happening here on earth look at verse 10 verse 10 tells us blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake the path that leads to that glorious heaven is the path of righteousness and there might be persecution in the way trial in the way you keep on going because of heaven blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven i'll be there in psalm 24 we're reading from verse 3 psalm 24 reading from verse 3 who shall ascend into the hill of the lord or who shall stand in this holy place going to heaven is ascending is going up who shall ascend into the hill of the lord if you find yourself descending if you find yourself going down in your love in your commitment in your passion for holiness if you find you are going down you're going the opposite of heaven 
If you're going to get to heaven, there must be ascending, increasing your passion, your love, your pursuit, and your life, and your character. If you are at the same level, horizontally, you're not going to heaven. Earth is so low that if you're going horizontally, you only will achieve, you only will get to a place like you are now. If you're going to get to heaven, you must be ascending, going up. How about your conviction? Are you going up? About your new life, are you going up? In your character, are you going up? Are you ascending? In your devotion to the Lord, are you going down? Or are you at the same level? Or are you going up to get to heaven? Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? We're looking at uh, verse 4 now. You understand when it says, who shall stand in his holy place? You might have heard of mountain climbers. They want to stand at the peak of the mountain. And they want to put the flag of their country at the top of the mountain to show that they have been there. They have to be ascending. They'll get tired. Ascending, they'll get weary. They have to be ascending. It will appear that they are out of breath. And maybe it's difficult to even take the next step. But because they want to stand at the peak of the mountain, they keep on climbing. And then it says they will stand in the hill of the Lord. Who are those people that will ascend and stand at the, at the high place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. They have clean hands. They're not touching other people's wives. They are not embracing other people's husbands. They have clean hands. Their hands are not sticky. They are not stealing. They are not taking anybody's money. Their hands are clean. Their hands are not defiled by blood. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in a solid place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. They are not imagining evil. They are not thinking evil. They are not perpetrating evil. Their thoughts are clean. And the blood of the Lamb has cleansed them from every sin. And they deliberately will detach, dissociate themselves from others who are stealing. Who, are, who want to give them part of the money. Because they don't want anything to hinder them from standing in that holy place. And they have not lifted up their soul unto vanity. Neither have they sworn deceitfully. Revelation chapter 19 verse 7. In Revelation chapter 19 verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. In verse 8, it says, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in, in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Not the righteousness of the Sadducees. That's one is self-righteousness. It is not the righteousness of the man-made person. I try my best. I turn over a new leaf. All that righteousness of the Pharisees cannot make it. Except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. This is the righteousness of God 
Righteousness demanded by God. Righteousness offered by Christ. The righteousness of faith. That is the righteousness of the saints. Let's come to point number two now. Point number two. We're looking at the rejection and the everlasting suffering of the godless with the hypocrites. We're looking at Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. Revelation chapter 21. We're reading from verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and all mongers and sorcerers and all idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Then in Revelation chapter 22, reading from verse 15, it says, For without are dogs and sorcerers and all mongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. The rejection and everlasting suffering of the godless with hypocrites. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the exclusion of the abominable from the blessedness of heaven. Number two, the experience of the abandoned in the burning brimstone outside heaven. Number three, the expulsion for absence from the bridegroom's book in heaven. Let's look at number one. Number one is the exclusion of the abominable from the blessedness of heaven. It tells us in Revelation chapter 21, reading from verse 8. It says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and allmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Look at the list there. And remember, this is the revelation of God unto John through the angel for the servants of God all over the world. And in all generations, it says, and the fearful. Who are the people that will miss heaven? Those who are fearful to repent. Those who are fearful to make right their ways. Those who are fearful to make restitution. Those who are fearful to take a stand. To say, I hear the call of the Lord is calling me to salvation and I must re respond. They are afraid of what their neighbors will say. If I repent, I don't go to those nightclubs anymore. I don't gamble anymore. And I don't practice all the evil who have been practicing before. They might ask me, have you joined them? Are you deeper now? Are you holy now? Are you now better than us now? They're afraid of the comments of people. They know the mind of God. They have the calling of God. They know this is the way. Walk ye therein. They are fearful. There are those who are fearful. They know the right thing to do. They might pray a kind of short prayer. Oh God, forgive me. I will not go that direction again. And then after the meeting, after the prayer, then they want to do what they consecrated they were going to do. And somebody says, I see you. I see that you are trying to get out of what we have been doing together. Okay, go ahead. I give you one week. 
and then they put fire under him and then he says i'm afraid of these people you're afraid of fire that will go out in a moment of time and you're not afraid of the fire that will burn and burn you forever and ever and you will not die whatever you're afraid of whoever you're afraid of that person you're afraid of can take heaven from you and take you from heaven the fearful and the unbelieving they hear the lord is coming yes i know the lord is coming i don't believe he will come today i will i don't believe he'll come just at any time they are unbelieving they hear the word of god without holiness no man shall see the lord i hear that do i believe that in their lives in small things and big things they consider what material gain they are going to have and the consideration of the material gain makes them not to fully wholeheartedly believe that this will land them in the lake of fire the fearful the unbelieving the abominable those are the dirty people the dirty in character they're dirty in behavior they're dirty in their thoughts and they're defiled and it says those ones will not get to heaven and the murderers that one is clear those who shed other people's blood those who kill other people maybe for money maybe to get their house the servants or will you know take the life of the master and the maid will take the life of the mistress because they want to get to be trinkets they're looking for it might be some material tangible things they're looking for and they shed blood and they are murderers or they maybe they don't do it directly they instigate and influence other people to do it and then it said they're all mongers that just talking about uh, those who are you know fleshly they have the loss of the flesh and they don't ever want you to mention that word that jesus mentioned a number of times fornication adultery they say there's a modern world and preachers should be so dignified and civilized more civilized than christ more civilized than paul more civilized than the almighty god that says adulterers and fornicators if they do not repent if their lives are not clean they will spend eternity in hell fire well and he said the sorcerers the sorcerers are the people that use dark powers occultic powers they use the due to terminate the lives of other people terminate pregnancy terminate whatever and then it says idolaters and all liars they shall have their part in the lake that burned with fire and brimstone that the final second eternal separation from god and from heaven at the second death in verse 27 it tells us and there shall in no wise enter into heaven any sin that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie but they which are rich in in the lamb's book of life First Corinthians chapter 6 We're reading from verse 9 First Corinthians chapter 6 Reading from verse 9 Know ye not We ought to know by now Know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God Be not deceived Neither fornicators Preachers Make it clear If we just say sin Sin those people don't understand what sin is describe it name it tell them don't be afraid remember the preachers who are fearful fearful to declare the might of god they are not going to have a place with god in eternity it says don't you know that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god be not deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers 
nor the effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, man and man, woman and woman, effeminate, abusers of themselves with mankind. Verse 10, it says, no thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. They will not. Galatians chapter 5, reading from verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. If you are a preacher of the Bible, preach the Bible. Read the word. Explain the word. Let the sinners know why the Lord is sending them to hell if they don't repent. Don't just use, uh, you know, some innocent words and some watered down sentences. Don't just use some uh, sugar coated words. Tell it as it is. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, verse 20, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, verse 21, envies, murders, drunkenness, Revelies and such like of the which I tell you before, and as I have also told you in time past, Paul the Apostle said, I told you before, I told you in time past, and I'm telling you now. What a preacher that he didn't say when we were not very civilized and when we are not very much cultured we mentioned adultery, fornication the feminine abusers of themselves with mankind but now we are ministering to highly placed people and we are ministering to civilized people civilized people commit adultery too and civilized people, all those people all over, anywhere and everywhere, they commit fornication, they commit adultery. If we want real salvation for them, make it clear. Paul the Apostle said, I told you before, I'm telling you now, I will keep on telling you that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Mark chapter 7, we're reading from verse 21. For from within, this is Christ, this is Christ. He is a forerunner and a perfect example. And we're following after him. You as a preacher, you don't ever want to be more civilized than Christ. And use the excuse that now we're in modern life. And in modern life, we don't spell out things. We don't say this is black. This is white. We say it's gray. It's somewhere in between. Be like Christ. Look at what Christ said. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, verse 22, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, verse 23, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. Let's look at number two here. Number two is the experience of the abandoned in the burning brimstone outside heaven. In Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable 
and murderers and all mongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second day chapter 14 verse 10 in chapter 14 reading from verse 10 the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb in verse 11 and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever chapter 19 verse 20 Revelation chapter 19 verse 20 and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image these both were cast alive into the lake a lake of fire burning with brimstone chapter 20 verse 10 and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever Matthew chapter 25 reading from verse 41 then shall he say unto them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels verse 46 and these shall go away into everlasting punishment that's what jesus said is the truth is the personification of the truth and it remains the same yesterday today and forever he says there is a lake of fire burning was with sulfur with brimstone and the suffering is forever and ever satan will be in that lake of fire the antichrist will be in that lake of fire the false prophet and all false prophets will be in that lake of fire and the people that are fearful the people that are unbelieving the people that are abominable the people who are among us the adulterers the fornicators and the people who die in their defilement they will spend eternity in that lake of fire these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life everlasting let's look at number three here is the expulsion for absence from the bridegroom's book in heaven that book is called the book of life that book is called the lamb's book of life the lamb is the bridegroom and if any name is missing out of the bridegroom's book of life out of the lamb's book of life out of the book of life in heaven that name because he is absent from that book of life he'll spend eternity forever and ever in a place of punishment the expulsion for absence from the bridegroom's book in heaven revelation chapter 21 verse 27 and there shall in no wise enter into each anything that defileth 
neither whatsoever worketh abomination whosoever whatsoever anything anyone or maketh a lie or manufactures a lie there are people whose lives revolved around telling lies for whatever reason they want to cover up something they want to gain something they want to avoid being detected they want to avoid saying sorry they want to avoid repentance they want to save their face they save their face they cannot save their lives they save their face they cannot save their heart their spirit and therefore they manufacture they create and they make lives and their friends know them they say nobody can catch so and so he always has a ready made lie to cover up that action maybe that's this kind of wisdom the wisdom that drives a person to hell the wisdom that makes a person not to remember repentance the wisdom that makes a person to shut up himself in evil and this and the uh, and deception and destruction it says or whatsoever maketh a lie but the people that will get to heaven are they which are rich in the lamb's book of life who are the people that are missing from the book of life who are the people that don't have their names preserved in the book of life exodus chapter 32 we're reading from verse 31 and moses returned unto the lord and said oh these people have seen a great sin and have made them gods of gold verse 32 yet now if thou will forgive their sin without repenting yet now if thou will, will forgive their sin without feeling the deep contrition and conviction of what they have done yet now if thou will forgive their sin with all the excuses Aaron and all the other people are making they gave me those the gold I threw into fire and without doing anything at all this is what came out forgiveness does not come on the basis of excuses the name of anyone does not enter into the book of life by giving excuses and eh, forgive me in the name of Jesus it doesn't come like that maybe they can forgive us here on earth but God is looking for repentance a change of heart a change of life a change of character a change of action a change of behavior and real deeply feeling sorry sorry to the point where we'll not do that again and then we're forgiven by the grace of god and we're cleansed by the grace of god here is moses saying yet now if thou will forgive them he couldn't finish that sentence and if not blot me i pray thee out of the book which thou hast written well moses god walks by his word by his law god does not work by the desire of moses and the good intention of moses look at verse 33 it says and the lord said unto moses and the lord said unto the intercessor and the lord said unto the shepherd of israel and the lord said unto the leader of israel willing to have his name out of the book god said 
I don't act like that. How can I take your name away from the book that I've written? You have not offended me. You stayed with me on the mount those 40 days. You're loyal. You're faithful. You're dependable. You're righteous. You're the kind of person I'm looking for. And if all of Israel were like you, heaven will be happier. I don't walk by the suggestion of any man. I have a principle. I have a precept. And this is how I act. Whosoever have sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Those are the people they are missing from the bridegroom's book in heaven. And because they have sinned against the Lord and they do not repent, if they die in that condition, they cannot get to heaven. Revelation chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 8. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, the Antichrist, whose names are not written in the book of the Lamb, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Revelation chapter 17, verse 8. It says, And the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life the people who see occultism at work and they wonder the people who see the magic of the beast and they wonder the people who see the activities of the antichrist and they wonder and they, they do not know the difference between the miracles of christ and the magic of the antichrist and they just wonder and then he says whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world from the foundation of the world from adam and eve unto the time of noah and abraham and moses from the foundation of the world unto the time of malachi and matthew and unto the time of jude and revelation all through from the foundation of the world all those whose names have not been written in the book of life they will be in that burning lake of fire. In chapter 20, verse 15, Revelation 20, verse 15, and whosoever, and whosoever, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Let's come to point number three now. Point number three is our righteousness and entire sanctification before going to heaven. It says in Revelation chapter 21, we're looking at verse 3, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall wipe, shall be with them, and be their God. Then in verse 4, it says, And God shall wipe away all tears tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away verse 5 it says and he that sat upon the throne said behold i make all things new and he said unto me, Write, for these are the words, are words that are true and faithful. Verse 6, it says, And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. 
I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Then in verse 7, it says, And he that overcometh, he that overcometh, it's not, I wish to overcome, go beyond that. I want to overcome, go beyond that. Look at your life at present. What is there that the Lord will say, you claim to be my child. But even you never make any attempt to even overcome temptation. And you know it's temptation. You never make attempt to climb higher and to go higher. Day by day, these challenges come. You didn't even ask. Is this idea coming from Satan? You just plunge yourself in this thought, this imagination, and this action, and this behavior. Is it coming from the enemy of my soul? And you just, you just go ahead. You don't even think. You don't meditate. You don't remember the words you have heard and the words you have learned. Yes, I know. You read your Bible every day and after you finish the reading and you read the notes, that's where it stops. During the day when temptations come, when trials come, and when worldly opinions come, you don't even analyze. You don't say, can that be right? Is that a sanctified action? Is that a believer's action? You just plunge yourself into that. It's like you're not hearing the Bible. It's like you're not reading the Bible. It's like you don't have, you don't know the teaching of the word of God. There is no asking for grace and asking for vision as asking for insight into what your life ought to be. You're not thinking. And you're not making an effort to be an overcomer when the Lord will come. Your life today is just like it was one year ago. What you're doing today is what you would have done one year ago. There is no change. The accumulation of knowledge over the months, over the weeks, and over the whole year. There is no evidence there's any added knowledge in your life. You're not overcoming. And the Lord said, heaven will be for the overcomers. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. Three things. Number one, define prerequisite for earnest seekers of heaven. Number two, decisive preparation with entire sanctification of the heart. Number three, definite presentation with enlightened surrender and holiness. Look at number one. Number one is the divine prerequisite for earnest seekers of heaven. It tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Those are the earnest seekers. They say, how much time am I going to spend on earth? I'm seeking for that glorious heaven. And then we're told in verse 14, it says, For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Every step and every day and every action and every response to what is happening on earth, they declare 
I'm not going to spend eternity here. I'm seeking, I'm seeking a better country. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, it says, But now they desire a better country. That is an heavenly wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. Number two here, number two is the decisive preparation with entire sanctification of heart. It tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. And that's a serious minded believer. He knows that there's evil in the office and some things are going on behind the door. He knows there's conspiracy and he knows that they're planning to do evil. And he says, they don't have the destiny I have. They don't have the destination I have. And they do not have the sight and the vision I have. I cannot join them. He knows people that are just playing religion And because they are playing religion They do some things that appear to be evil There's no other thing You cannot say that action is righteous You cannot say that behavior is heavenly You cannot say that behavior is holy There is something there that looks like evil And this man is seeking to get to heaven And is making preparation with the entire sanctification therefore he says i must obey the scriptures he says abstain from all appearance of evil and then in verse 23 and the very god of peace sanctify you holy sanctify you completely sanctify you entirely and i pray god your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 24 Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. You miss your amen. Look at Hebrews chapter 13 reading from verse 12 Wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without outside the gate and then in verse 13 he says let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach bearing his reproach have you ever taken a stand a stand for holiness a stand for sanctification a stand for the requirement of God that somebody will see you after that and look down on you and look at you from head to toe and then make their mouth somehow and belittle you how did you feel that's the approach bearing his reproach have you ever taken a stand and you are separating yourself from the evil doers and you will not sign for and you will not acknowledge and you will not approve of what is wrong and then people will walk around you and make some comments that reproaches you and they say holy holy man sanctified sanctimonious man going to heaven is the only one going to heaven we know nothing at all that is the prophet of the hour and they do that so you can pass comment and so that an argument will start if that pains you if you want to let down your guard if you want to cancel your conviction because of that reproach there's no sanctification there let us go forth therefore unto him outside the camp 
bearing his reproach. Verse 14, for here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Number three here is the definite presentation with enlightened surrender and holiness. We come to present ourselves to the Lord and it's an enlightened surrender. You see, there are people, oh, they will say, I surrender this money. God says, I'm looking for your heart. I surrender this. I surrender my time. God said, that's all right. But you know, your time without your heart can do nothing, can achieve nothing. I surrender this. I, I, you know, this one, this one, property, whatever. I surrender. That's all right. But you know, without your heart, it says, my son, my daughter, give me your heart. That is the source of all action. Give me your heart. Let me purge. Let me purify. Let me sanctify. Let me recreate that heart. Let me turn that heart in the direction you ought to go. Enlightened surrender. There are many things people are surrendering to the Lord. Like Ananias and Sapphira, they brought half of the goods, part of the money. We surrendered that. Ananias, tell me, is this all? That the Lord requires, yes, that's all. That's not all. There is the enlightened surrender. He wants you to be enlightened in the word. Enlightened by the word of God. Enlightened by the spirit of God. And with that enlightenment, without hiding anything, you see, Lord, all within, all around, all I think of, all I possess, I cannot remember any other thing. I'm not laying on the altar. My prestige, my position, my personality, my progress, my property, my very purpose of life, everything of God, Christ surrendered everything for me. And so now I bring all thinking about my name, my pride, my this, my that. Lord, I am enlightened now and I come and I bring enlightened surrender with holiness of heart unto you. Submit yourselves therefore unto God. James chapter 4, reading there from verse 7, submit yourself from within from your heart, from your soul, and from your love, from your passion, and don't have any other thinking, any other ambition, any other love apart and above the love of God. Submit yourselves, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil. The devil will tell you, hide that one, keep that one, push that one apart. Your dignity, be careful, don't surrender that. And your high position, don't surrender that. And then your secret, don't let anybody know your secret. And don't surrender that one. Uh, don't listen to the devil. Receive the devil and he will flee from you. As we come before the Lord and we surrender everything to the Lord. And we say, Lord, nothing will I hide. Nothing will I shield. Nothing will I cover up my heart, my life, everything I've got without any reservation. And there's no rival against you concerning my life. All I bring. And when we do that, then he'll sanctify us, purge us, purify us. And then with holiness, when the Lord comes, we'll, we'll be with the Lord in Jesus' name. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 12. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 12. And the Lord make you increase and abound in love 
one to another and toward all men even as we do toward you in verse 13 he then tells us to the end for the purpose for the goal that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God even our father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his says may he make you from the heart your soul your mind your life your character may he make you a true saint with holiness of heart ready for the coming of the lord and ready for heaven in jesus name let's rise up now and talk to the lord in prayer take everything you have learned everything you have heard take it to the lord in prayer and let god do a great work great work in your heart and in your life